the wildfires, the heat domes, the higher sea level rise, this is climate change. Hi, Amanda, how are you? Good, how are you doing? <laughs> uh, well, I heard you had some climate change questions, and since I'm a climate scientist and oceanographer, I thought, is there, is there anything I could tell you? So I had a situation where I had a colleague, he lives in California, and he was affected by the Paradise Fire. So I've, I've never really had any parts or, or really, I guess, taken it kind of serious, the, the climate change and this extreme weather. But when that situation happened to him, it kind of was eye-opening. It was, you know, we had to go through things. You actually felt really sorry for him and his family. He lost his entire house. Yep, more and more of us are, are taking our disaster preparedness, whether it's floods, extreme heat. When you see all these different signs, the wildfires, the heat domes, the higher sea level rise, these are part of the same phenomena. This is climate change. I have so many questions about climate change and I'm kind of embarrassed to say, I don't think I know exactly what climate change is. Climate change is uh, basically the energy imbalance of the planet. We've made a pollution blanket with all the carbon dioxide that is the product of burning fossil fuels like coal for electricity. These form a carbon dioxide pollution blanket which actually keeps the earth warmer and warmer. I don't know about you, but it is getting hot here in Arizona. It's so hot. So I live in Phoenix. Where, where do you live? I live down in Tucson. We're both in Arizona. Yeah, there, it's definitely higher in the, in the summer. It's, it's getting ridiculous. And to be honest, though, I'm one of those moms that when I hear something, I like to do my research. Do all scientists believe this? 99% of climate scientists agree on this. This isn't a belief. It's evidence. And we all agree, this isn't a debate, it's happening now, and we need to move faster to do something about it. You're, you're a mom, and you have little kids, and yet you're still a professional, you're a scientist who has a love, obviously, for the ocean and the environment. I mean, how does that make you feel when you literally turn on the news and the next thing you hear is there's another wildfire? I mean, how do you handle that? How do you balance that? It, it is hard, but... Uh, I look at my kids' faces the way you always do. Why do you get out of bed? Because there they are, right? You can't just leave them. And I don't want them, I, honestly, I, you know, <laughs> I'm terrified that my grandkids, when I have them, will tug on my sleeve, Grandma, Grandma, why, why didn't you do more when it would have made a difference? I can't. I can't stand it if, if my wee ones think that I wouldn't go to the mat for them. What can I do to help? That's what Science Moms is, is we need help. We need help. We need the other moms in the village to ask to talk to the manager. This is a great place to stick your outrage. Things are being taken from our children, their futures, and it's reckless. It's reckless. We know what this pollution blanket is doing. We, we need to move faster. It's too, we don't have enough time um, to just, just wait around and hope that it all works. We're gonna have to push. Call our leaders and ask them what they're doing to transition us to clean energy, to cut the pollution. So I appreciate your time so much. It's so informative, but I really appreciate the fact that you made it so understandable. So thank you for, for letting me ask my questions and I have a better understanding. I'm so glad, I'm so glad. And go talk across that back fence. We can use all the help we can get. We really appreciate it. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, bye.